Hi, my name is Jason Oscar, and I'm here to talk to you about remaking the internet, the interplanetary file system, and the distributed web. So you might see the title of this presentation and think to yourself, isn't the internet already pretty freaking great? It's one of the best inventions ever. It's changed the way we work. It's changed the way we communicate. It's changed the way we live our lives. And it's the reason why we're here today. And you'd be right, mostly. But there are some problems with the internet. And I'm going to talk about some of those problems, what IPFS is, and how it can address those problems. So one of the first major problems with the internet is centralization. There are a lot of companies that own most of our data. And there are only a few companies, or there are a few companies that own most of our data. And there are only a few companies that are providing access to the internet in general. And this can cause a lot of problems. If Facebook goes down, a lot of us can't access any of our photos. If Google goes down, a lot of us can't access documents that we're collaborating on. And this can actually have some geopolitical ramifications, as people in Egypt found out during the Arab Spring a few years ago. One morning, they woke up without any access to the internet. It had been shut down. People that are organizing politically can't talk to one another. Loved ones can't talk to one another. So this is a real issue. Another problem is latency. We can think of this as a way to access the network. If people's latencies are too long, they can't really use the internet in a practical fashion. Or if their network is unstable, this problem is only exacerbated by latency. And we can see this chart and see some of the times that it can take for, to get from point A to point B. Now, some of these aren't that bad. But if you're in Nairobi and you're trying to access a resource in Tokyo, you might have some problem with almost a half a second of latency. So it's a real issue, because we're kind of preventing people from accessing the internet and using all of its goodness if their latency is too large. Another problem is offline access. Many services on, many services on the internet don't really have offline access. Again, you know we've experienced this. If GitHub goes down, it's really hard for us to collaborate on that pull request. If Google goes down, we can't really collaborate on those Google Docs we all are working on together. And so this also showed up when AWS went down and took down a huge swath of the internet with it. If a lot of these applications or websites had offline access, we wouldn't really have to deal with this issue that much. So what if we could persist some of these things offline? The internet's also pretty impermanent. Links break, services go out of business, and we can't use the things that we like. You know, I know a lot of people loved Google Reader. So that went out. What do you do? What if we could persist applications, services, websites? And last, oh, the international sign for a lost data, broken links. So location-based addresses are also an issue with the internet. They kind of undergird some of the things that I was talking about before with respect to latency. But it can also think about strain on a network. If many people are accessing a single server, right, because our URLs are just maps to specific servers and computers, people are just hammering that location. It can be really strenuous on that computer and the network in general. So here's where IPFS comes in. Again, the interplanetary file system. Now, what is it? It calls itself a hypermedia distribution protocol. And that probably doesn't help. But distribution is the key word for two reasons. One, it just kind of emphasizes that it's a transport protocol, how data is distributed along the network. And two, it emphasizes that it's trying to actually radically remake the internet into a distributed network. Think a torrent. I'm sure you've all torrented things very legally. Um, but think about a peer-to-peer -peer distributed network where data lives on the edges of the network, on your local machine. As you're browsing the internet using an IPFS node, you're actually downloading the data that you access. So you are having it locally on your machine, and you're serving it simultaneously. So you're both client and host. So it presents a really interesting way of navigating through the web. Now, how does this work? Content-based addressing is one of the major keys of IPFS. So the things that you're looking at right now are actually IPFS URIs. And the gobbledygook that's coming after the slash IPFS slash is actually a hash of the content that the link is pointing to. Now, for a lot of us that have used Git, this might seem a little familiar. Whenever you make a commit, you're hashing the contents of the repository, and it spits out a nice commit hash that you can then rebuild that whole file system with. Right? This is a very, very similar concept. You go to this URI with your IPFS node and prints out the content that you have. Now, what makes this possible? And that is a really cool data structure called the Merkle DAG. It stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. Blowing your minds. So think of this really as just a linked list, where the key of the node is actually the hash of the content on the node. So how does this work practically? This is kind of a visualization of a directory in IPFS. We have the root directory that has pointing to three different resources. 
hello.txt, minder, big file JS. And we can already start to see some of the cool things that are happening with IPFS right here. We see hello.txt and myfile.txt point to the same object because the content of that object is identical, the hash is identical. So we're already getting some deduplication on the network. We're saving a little storage space. Also, bigfile.js is a big file. So it's getting chunked into three smaller pieces here. IPFS does this automatically. It chunks smaller file. It chunks big files into smaller pieces to make them easy to serve over the network. So actually, when you access bigfile.js, it concatenates the chunks together to serve one file. And it allows you to, again, to use this peer-to-peer -peer network to be served from multiple people. Right? When you access content on IPFS, it looks for the peers you're connected to. By the hash, it asks for specific content. And so it can bring that content into you locally. This can already, we can already think about how this is solving some of the problems that I mentioned earlier. But we can see it live. So I'm going to add something to an, my I, IPFS node. So I'm going to make a cool new file called techtalkin.txt. And it says, this is the best talk. And I'm going to save it. And I can run the simple command IPFS add tech talk in. And immediately you see it prints out a hash. This is the hash of the content that I just created. And I'm serving it right now. So I can take this hash, go to my, I go to my browser, and you can see that every uh, IPFS node comes with a web UI, a nice little interface for navigating through your IPFS node. You can see my ID. You can find the content that I'm sharing on this node. And you can even see all the files that I'm creating server that I have hosting right now. A lot of images, a lot of really cool text files. So let's open up the one that I just created. And I'm serving this node right now. In case you can't see, it says, this is the best talk. <laughs> so we can see again, I have a, a file that I'm serving locally. We can already think about if someone else grabbed this file, they'd be serving this content too. This can start to address latency issues, potentially. This ripple effect of everyone hosting the same content. We can all grab it and serve it to one another very easily. So another thing that this helps is with impermanence. Again, these links being the hashes of the content, if I change one byte, whole new hash. So you still have access to this link. It doesn't go away. But you can access versions of the content, which is really cool. You can kind of see the history of a web page, of an application, because you'll have hashes to every single one, potentially. And we can see some of this offline access that I have by seeing a website that is actually also already being served on IPFS. So I navigated to the distributed Wikipedia before. And if I reload, I'll see that I still have it uh, because it's cached locally on my IPFS node. Now, every page that I've been to on this website, I have locally. So if Wikipedia goes down and y'all are out of luck, but I can finish my research paper on Bill English. <laughs> right? I have this file locally. And also, if Wikipedia goes out of business, if Jimmy Wales can't get those donations, I'm serving Wikipedia now. You all can still access it. So we can think about how this is really addressing a lot of the problems that I talked about at the beginning and the potential for this kind of technology. So with all of that said, is this the future of the web? And the answer to that question is, unfortunately, more questions. The jury's still out. This is a really young technology. Uh, there's not a 1.0 version. Uh, how will data privacy work on a network like this? How can content be reliably deleted or unpublished? Sometimes the impermanence of the internet works to our benefit. If our data gets leaked, published, we kind of want that to not be there anymore. Will the network support exist? A peer-to-peer -peer network is really only as good as the peers. So we need people to buy in, leading to the last question of, will this even be usable to regular humans? All of these questions kind of bring up a little bit of friction in the adoption for IPFS. You know, I don't know that much about network, network configuration. So it was very hard for me to research this at certain times to figure out how I could browse in a way that I had been comfortable having used the internet for most of my life. So there's still a lot of questions there, again. But IPFS is an open source project. They're also making a JavaScript implementation. So I think this presents us with a really, really cool opportunity to rebuild the internet in the way that we want to see it. Truly, like we have this opportunity right now to contribute to a project that has ambitions for 
changing the way that we browse the web and the way that we interact with the internet. So I want to take this time to make you think about how you interact with the web, how you interact with your data and your content, and think maybe that you could contribute to IPFS and rebuild the internet in your image. Thank you very much.